round bales. With the summer we had last year, we ended up running short. So Alan's dad's gonna sell us some round bales and hay for our dry cows and heifers. But right now the trailer is hooked up to the truck, but it's froze down. So he's gonna go, Alan's gonna go get the skid steer, try and get it unhooked. Okay, so the trailer's stuck in some deep snow. So Alan's behind me right now. He's gonna give me a push and he wants me to move the truck ahead. Did I mention? Yeah, it's a stick shift. Now, I can somewhat drive a stick shift. I mean, like if Alan needed to go to the hospital, I could get him there. It wouldn't be pretty. Haha, I did it. <laughs> He's scraping the snow off the trailer. plan for the day we're going to show you. Um, Jen's got a cow to breed, so we'll get that done, and we're going to dry off the cow. We've got one here that's getting close to calving, so we'll go through and explain the dry off process and what that is and, and how we do it. finish milking her out here, get all the milk out of her. Uh, not that she's, she's not milking very much. Typically when we dry a cow off, we do it about 60 days before they're due to calf. She's a little bit longer than that, but her milk production has dropped off. After they calf, when they hit a certain high spot in the milk production, then it just slowly starts dropping. And so she's, she's really, I don't know what her last test was, but she's not milking very much. But we'll get, get everything out of her and then uh, I'll show you the rest. Okay, so we got her all milked out now with the machine. Um, so what we're gonna do, we got these dry cow tubes. They're uh, long-lasting antibiotics. 
Um, we put one of these in each quarter, um, and that just helps when they're not being milked to prevent any infection or anything. They're not 100% foolproof, but they do help. Um, some people don't use them. I don't know. We had better luck with them. Um, so that's what we're going to do there. Um, I've got them, I warm them up first, especially when it's cold out like it is today. Um, it just absorbs better because this stuff will get really thick um, if, it's, if it gets too cold. It doesn't absorb into the quarter as well. So we've got an alcohol pad here. We'll take that. And we'll clean off the end of each teat really well so we don't get any dirt, any bacteria, or anything like that in there. There's always going to be a little bit of milk left in there, but get the majority of it out. Clean the end off real good. We'll take the end off of the tube. Push that in each quarter. Okay, now we've got all four of those done, and then I'll take just our iodine post dip here, and I'll dip each quarter. This is the same dip that we use on the rest of the cows when we're done milking them. That just helps kind of seal the end up, keep any bacteria out, and it's also got iodine and different stuff in it to help kill any bacteria until the teat end can seal up on its own. All right, now we're gonna mark it with this uh, marking paint. This is an actual livestock marking paint. It's not just a spray paint. The reason we do that is since she's going to be in the barn a couple days before she goes out, just so we don't accidentally milk her. Just because you get in the habit of milking her every day, it, you know, it's a possibility it could happen. So this paint just reminds us that she's treated for not milking. Shake it up. You know, we use diff there's different colors this comes in. We use pink on these darker colored cows just because it shows up way better for some reason. We also have a bright orange, but it doesn't seem to show up as well on the dark cows. We'll put an X on her here, and then she's got a lighter spot on her udder, so I'll put some there too, just to kind of show up a little bit better yet. And then once uh, we're done here, I'll probably deworm her. I think you saw that before, before she goes out, and uh, she'll be good to go. Alright, we got her dried off here. Um, it was kind of loud with the vacuum pump running, so I just kind of wanted to explain a few things of why we dry a cow off and a little bit about that process. The reason we dry them off is because their body needs time to basically reset before they calf again. If you just kept milking this cow right straight through uh, and didn't dry her off at all, didn't quit milking her, she would just run out of milk basically not far after she calved. So when you dry them off, we treat them with an antibiotic. That's the, that is the last time she will get milk, is right before we dry her off, until she calves again. Um, this cow is not milking much right now, um, pretty much next to nothing, so we don't have to worry much about her udder swelling up from a lot of extra milk. Um, even though I do cut their grain way back, um, they still get hay and corn silage, so they don't go hungry or anything. But I'll cut their grain way back so they're not producing as much milk if it is a cow that's milking heavier. Um, if they are milking heavier, um, we've had some questions of what happens to the milk that stays in their udder. And it just, it'll get reabsorbed by their body um, as time goes on. The reason we stop milking them, like once we dry her off, now we won't milk her until she freshens. And the reason that is, with any cow, even some of them, you know, they'll swell up if they're milking a lot, their udder will get pretty full. Uh, I used to do that. I used to milk, like try milking them once a day to cut them down. Um, but you're kind of defeating the purpose. And then, of course, you can't really use a dry treat when you do that because you milk it out right away, uh, you know, like an antibiotic. But what all that does really is kind of defeats the purpose because you're you're still milking that cow some, so she'll she, her body will keep telling her to make milk because you're still you're still using it. So you just pretty much have to treat them and just stop milking them and leave them go until they freshen. Um, and then now that she's dried off, she'll stay in the barn a couple days just to make sure if she does get any swelling or anything, we don't want to kick her right out into cold weather, meaning it's winter time. 
Um, so we'll leave her in the barn a few days till, till if there's any swelling it goes down or whatever, and then she'll just go out with the dry cows. Um, and they get fed different out there. They get a, a poor quality hay, um, and they, they do get a little bit of corn silage, kind of we just sweep out the mangers, what's left. Um, and they don't really get a little grain, whatever's mixed in there, and a, and a different kind of mineral. Um, other than that, we don't want them to get put on, you want them to put on weight, but you don't want them to get too fat because it can cause health problems when they do freshen again. Um, and then as far as the antibiotic goes, once she freshens, the, the antibiotic that we use when we dry her off, that's a long-lasting antibiotic, and it says that if they're if they're dried off over 30 days, that, that antibiotic is gone from their system. We still do test their milk before it goes in the tank. Um, the calf, obviously, it gets the first colostrum milk for two or three days, usually, until that's gone, and then they'll go to a milk replacer. But we always, we test that milk first, and once there's, our test shows no antibiotic, um, it'll go in the tank. If we have milk that goes in the tank, that would have antibiotic in it, and the truck would pick it up, that would be what they call a hot load of milk. If that truck load tested positive for any antibiotic, we would have to buy the whole truck load, and that, that would pretty much break the bank, so we don't definitely don't want that. Also, our son is allergic to antibiotics, and, and we drink our own milk out of the tank, so that's another, another big deterrent. So that milk is tested, we test it here, it's tested multiple times before it hits any store shelf, so there's there's no antibiotic that gets in it to the finished product at all. Um, and other than that, that's that's about why we dry them off and and what goes on there. Um, so now when you hear us talk about the dry cows or drying a cow off, you kind of have an idea what we're talking about. So when a cow freshens, is she a wet cow? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> And then before we let her out with the dry cows, we also will deworm them. Um, typically we use a, an oral dewormer and the one that pour on that goes down the back. Uh, the reason we use them both is the pour on one does not cover liver flukes and the oral one does. So it uh, kind of gives them a, a double hit on a diff, couple different kinds of, of uh, worms and stuff. So that's why we use two different ones. Come on, take a bite. There you go. You're supposed to keep it in. There you go.